Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On this uh, Sunday, appointed as Armed Forces Sunday here at Grace Church, joining probably hundreds of other churches, we're either doing it this Sunday or um, last Sunday or maybe on Independence Day weekend. Um, our text is about soldiering, of which we are. I've never been a soldier. Uh, I've never served in the military. I wrote a little article, my pastor's column in the newsletter this week is about <coughs> during the Vietnam War days when I was eligible to be drafted, how my life uh, went. But I've never been a soldier for my country, uh, but I am a soldier for Christ, soldier of the cross, and so are you. So anyway, our text, Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the devil's strategies. Ephesians 6, 11. Powerful words. Do you ever watch that movie, um, Patton? General Patton. He has a museum, do you know, uh, not too far from here on I-10 between Blythe and the Indio up there at the summit. You know what I'm talking about? There's a General Patton uh, museum up there. Never stopped there other than for gas and a Coca-Cola. I guess I should uh, stop in to take a look at the museum. But he was, a, he was a forceful commander, a forceful general, wasn't he? He would speak words like this, like St. Paul did where the Holy Spirit through St. Paul tells us to stand firm. Paul's tone is like General Patton's. Paul's tone is like a great military leader addressing professionally trained warriors before battle. St. Paul knows the situation is desperate. The enemy wants to win. Satan wants you to think you're broken and defeated, and sometimes we feel that way. Just quit, Christian. Give up, surrender. The good news, the gospel, is that Satan and his lives are defeated. We are washed in the blood of Christ, the red cross on that flag. He, the Lord Jesus, won the victory on the cross. Christ crushed and defeated the devil. He destroyed the consequences of sin. He destroyed sin and its consequences, death and the power of the devil. A promise made way back in the third chapter of Genesis and fulfilled on that small mountain called Golgotha or Calvary outside Jerusalem. The battle is won. Still, General Paul orders us to stand firm, to hold the line. It carries the tenacity and urgency to above all hold our place, to fix our bayonets, to dig in. This is spiritual warfare, the worst kind of all, with a deadly, cunning enemy. Stand firm means to be vigilant. Don't play around. Take life seriously. Keep alert. Always be on guard. In 1531, the reformer wrote it this way. Therefore, learn that the devil with his angels is not in far off away India or down in Ethiopia, but in your room, on the streets, in your house, the enemy is, in your bed, under your table, and where you walk and stand, there they surround you like bees. Kind of an interesting comment that Luther made 500 years ago. Uh, we follow the news in Maricopa County where we keep our home, and lately there have been a lot of bee attacks in the Maricopa County for some reason, out on hiking trails, and in neighborhoods and places like that. Some of those attacks have been fatal. Thus, the enemy and his evil angels, spiritual warfare can be fatal. Stand firm means to hold your ground. Don't let the enemy through. This is a desperate battle. It's the spiritual, it's the sp equivalent to the Battle of the Bulls, the Battle of Gettysburg, a terror attacked by ISIS. It's a battle about eternal salvation and countless other battles where a determined en enemy is held in place by a heroic stand of dedicated warriors. That would be you and that would be me. The warriors are the members of the body of Christ. How important it is for us to gather together, all of us to gather together, 
on a weekly basis, at least a weekly basis, to build each other up, to circle the wagons, and to confront the enemy, to stand firm. Hmm. You hold fast, even as the enemy gears up for another assault. You hear the chanting, the brush rustling, the enemy bugles in the distance. General, not Patton, but St. Paul says, stand firm, don't run, hold your line. How do we do that? We dip into our baptism, if you will. We persevere against the attack by letting Christ take the battle in our baptism. Hmm. To put it another way, it is Christ alone who gives us the strength to stand firm. Look at the gifts that he gives us. Our baptism in Christ is a death knell in the ears of the devil. Every time you say, either spiritually or in a prayer, or physically by perhaps making the sign of the cross or confessing your faith, you are claiming Christ as your armor, your Christ as your shield from the evil one. As newborns, we bring nothing into the fight. We are helpless and in need of constant care, but baptism is imported care and strength from God. It's God's activity. God transforms us through his Holy Spirit. Through the water and the word, we are made heirs of his kingdom and extended salvation. First Peter writes, baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you. That's quite a statement. Baptism now saves you. Not as a removal of plain old dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This emboldens you and me to stand firm. And the other means of grace, God is so good, he not only gives us the promise which comes out of the mouths of preachers and the words from the pages of the Bible, but he gives us tactile means to assure us that we have God on our side, the sacrament of the altar. We are nourished again and again with his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. This also emboldens us to stand firm. We continue the fight and see once more that the Lord is doing all the activity at his table. The gift of forgiveness and absolution in Christ renews and restores us. Stand firm against the devil's strategies. strategies. Everything that we are commanded to do, military people have to do the same. Those who know Jesus know they have to stand firm for the stars and stripes, and they have to stand firm for the cross of Jesus on a field of the white of his purity. A double command. They need our help. Let me tell you what we're doing. Not much, but not nothing. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod has 66 active duty military chaplains. Okay, that's a start. Another 71 chaplains serve in reserve and National Guard units, and 22 chaplains serve the Civil Air Patrol. We also have two directors of religious education. My hunch is they are specially trained to train and teach chaplains. We have chaplains deployed overseas in combat environments, but they're not all over there where the shooting is. Some reserve chaplains serve over there, but many chaplains serve within the United States to support domestic contingency operations. Ministry to the Armed Forces continues to support what the Senate has designed and called Operation Barnabas. The Operation Barnabas project is an effort which is, is uh, designed to care for the unique needs of all people associated with the U.S. military. Who would this be? Well, a lot of these soldiers have wives and have children. Hmm? They have families. So ministry to the armed force services from our church also um, pinpoints care to families under Operation Barnabas. The vision of Operation Barnabas is that every military-connected person lives in the hope and peace of God's love, that Jesus 
died for their sins too, that heaven is theirs, hmm? and mercy as revealed in Jesus Christ. Inspired by Christ's love, Operation Barnabas engages, empowers, and equips Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod faith communities, faith communities to provide hope, healing, and support to military-connected persons in their communities and congregations. My hunch is that congregations that are close to, or vice versa, facilities, military facilities of the American Armed Forces that are nearby congregations of our uh, church are asked to do supportive work for the soldiers at that base and for their families. And they need support from you and for me. By the way, Chaplain Ron Cox, whom I think you know, is one such military chaplain who serves at the um, Naval Air Facility, El Centro, where Chris works. Chris works with Chaplain Cox on a daily, a weekly, if not a daily basis. So uh, he gets uh, support from people like you and me. My point is, while we're asked to stand firm in Christ, our soldiers and their families are asked to stand firm in the faith and for their country for you and for me, and they need support. And our financial contributions are being asked for today or at any time to support chaplains like Chaplain Cox and to support Operation Barnabas, which takes money to send to congregations so they can do something for military people. The director of the Ministry to the Armed Forces of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod says this. He's kind of thanking us in advance. He says, we are grateful that your congregation, here, right here, chooses to join thousands of other congregations in our denomination on a weekend that you choose. That's today for us. In remembering the men and women of our armed forces and our chaplains, who bring them the changeless gospel message in a challenging and dangerous world. Will you and I help our soldiers and our chaplains to help our soldiers to stand firm in a dangerous world where there are physical assaults and spiritual assaults? Let me close. We have a responsibility and we have an opportunity to be in mission a little bit more, once a year on this one, huh? To tell the world how we stand firm. The world needs to know about this vast armada that belongs to Christ. You and me, right here. And our Yuma congregations and Blythe and Hauteville together, huh? And the whole denomination and the whole Christian church on earth. We are called to bring in those who are crumbling under the onslaught of Satan and who are crushed by evil schemes. We can do that one-on-one. -on -one. You know, start at home. Embrace your family with prayer. Take the good news to the workplace. Tell those going through similar circumstances to put their trust in Christ. And we can do it for our military. We can be that city on a hill that beacon of light, yes, little old Grace El Central can be that, beacon of light to a world darkened by sin. At all times, stand firm, General Paul says, in Christ alone. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus into life everlasting. Amen.